understand food and how easy it is to keep to optimum health with lots of food. I mean, everybody thinks of fat genes. Did you think of thin genes or skinny genes? The ketos has only come in for schizophrenics. Literally 60% of your diet has to be carbohydrates. I mean, for people have forgotten what seasonal vegetables are. The Indian diet has a 5,000 year old science. The next high group is fat. Do not cut out your fats. It is cutting out of your vegetables that is making you put on weight. So you have to have a smaller amount of protein. It was never meant to be the predominant meal. Smoke and bad nutrition affects three generations. Welcome to another brand new episode of the Life Positive Show. Tonight, we have a very special guest with us. She is Lenny Setalwar, famous nutritionist and health coach of India and also the regular columnist of Life Positive for, I think, more than two decades. And it gives me great pleasure to have her tonight on the show. She has many, many achievements under her belt. Uh, but apart from all those things, she's a very positive, optimistic, and vivacious personality. And it's always a great delight to interact with her. Uh, coming to her achievements, Nanny battled with weight all her life. But at the age of 32 in 1996, she went from 160 kgs to 60 kgs in a span of two years, which is a very uphill task for anybody who's trying to lose weight. And ever since Nanny has not looked back, uh, she pursued nutrition, uh, nutrition education and successfully became a nutrition consultant. Uh, with over 21 years of helping her clients, Nanny guides, prevents, retards, and reverses obesity and lifestyle diseases. Uh, the topic for tonight's uh, show is uh, eat more to lose more, which is I think most of us would love to do, lose as much as weight as we want without having to cut down on our food intake. And Nanny will tell us how we can achieve this. So welcome Nanny once again to this show. And uh, would you like to tell us something about yourself and your journey? Of course I would, but thank you very much. Shivi and the entire Life Positive group, which makes us come here and talk on all our favorite topics and something which can really have a very positive impact on the world. You know, you all have contributed so much and I had so many people in the last few weeks, oh, can you get me the magazine? I said, right now it's not physical, but we will get it for you soon. But thank you again. So let me tell you a bit about myself. I'm going to show a short little video. inviting me here to talk about my favorite topic food i love food i think of food i dream of food but the cause and effect of food on the body is very very special to me and i can tell you one thing the most thing which i hate i would say it's not a very positive word is people do not understand food and how easy it is to keep to optimum health with lots of food and it's very, very important not to starve yourself. And I'm going to tell you how one does that. Shivi, isn't that something which I think people would love to hear, that you eat more and you lose more? And why do you have to do that? Because if you eat less, you will actually start triggering your fat genes. What I learned in this last, I would say 57 years, but definitely 40 years, is you have to trigger 
your skinny jeans. I mean, everybody thinks of fat jeans. Did you think of thin jeans or skinny jeans? No, not at all. Only in terms of the jeans which we wear. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice one. Not in it. terms of the food we eat. Well, what I would tell you is, you know, when you go on any kind of a starvation diet, hmm. your body you know, will really react crazily. It will immediately try to store more food. So if you cut off food, it's really, really the worst thing you can do. Pill popping has so many side effects. You have the high protein diet, which is called the ketos diet. I've done it long back. I mean, I must have been 18. And let me tell you, the ketos has only come in for schizophrenics. You cannot cut out any food group. It is very, very, very important that you eat plenty to feel good. You know, your body's DNA, it's the food talks to you. And you need to eat good food. Tell me something. What are the food groups that you need to eat? Does anybody have any... Answer here, which is the most important food group? It is protein, is it fat, is it carbohydrate? Does anybody have anything you have to say? Shivi, do you have anything to say? Currently, the, it's the protein which is the big, uh, say, you know, the wonder element in law, weight loss. So perhaps the protein is, is more important and the, say, the fat is kind of lesser than that and the carbohydrates are the least important. This is what I think. Uh, obviously, uh, Nanny, you are the better, best person to tell us if I'm right or wrong. Well, one of the most important food group, of course, is water. I mean, I purposely did not mention this. I mean, I always tell people to begin the day with water, drink plenty of water through the day, because right. water helps you digest the food, to assimilate the food, to eliminate the food, to carry the nutrients. So water is a food group which people forget. And as a matter of fact, I always have a bottle by my side. I'm constantly drinking. It's the best pick me up. It's the best makeup. I mean, it's everything. I mean, water is life. Mm -hmm. Well, coming to food groups, you're going to be very, very shocked. I'm going to say carbohydrates. And most people, when I talk about carbohydrates, they actually think roti, rice, potatoes. Oh my God, is that what I have to have plenty? I mean, people forget that in carbohydrates, when I say literally 60% of your diet has to be carbohydrates, I don't mean piles of rotis and piles of bread and tons of pasta or heaps of rice. I mean, the most important group carbohydrates consists of vegetables. So when I say 60% carbohydrates, mm -hmm. I literally mean 35 to 40% maybe vegetables, or you could do, you know, about 35% vegetables and 5% of fruit. I mean, That's people just true. forget that. Uh, actually, this is uh, news to me because we associate carbs with all of these, uh, say, grains and breads and, uh, say, your potatoes, roti, towel, and fruits or vegetables is something we uh, connect with vitamins. And you know, <laughs> but I, I'm so surprised that nobody ever mentioned that you know, they're also very rich in carb carbohydrates. Actually, carbohydrates is your main source of energy. It's your feel good. You know, the mm -hmm. ketos diet, because it even cuts out your fruits and vegetables. I mean, why would they cut out fruits and vegetables when they have vitamins and minerals? So, I mean, actually, when you do a pure ketos, I had studied under Dr. Ruz Day about over 10 years ago, the ketos diet. And as you know, I've studied in Pyramid Medical uh, Gopi Krishna Piramal Medical Hospital and Dr. Swati had invited Dr. Roos Day to tell us about ketos and you cannot do it without 20, it needs about 20 vitamins and minerals to support it. And it also needs uh, digestive aids. I mean, it's, I mean, every food has vitamins and minerals, but your fruits and vegetables 
are one of the highest source plus they contain, contain antioxidants. Mm. Antioxidants, you know, be, you know, boost your immunity. Antioxidants fights free radical damage. So you have to have plenty of vegetables. Now you're going to be really shocked when I'm saying sabjiyo se sabjiya banao. So what else is vegetables made of? And you know, I've written this article so many times. I'm sure I might have written it for Life Positive because I've written it. It's been done in various languages. Well, people tell me matar ki sabji, aloo ki sabji, dahin ki sabji, paneer ki sabji, moong ki sabji, chane ki sabji, tofu ki sabji. And really one of them was, uh, of course, gatte ki sabji. I mean, I can go list and all. People have forgotten what vegetables are. And it is so shocking. I mean, for, people have forgotten what seasonal vegetables are. And coming from a country which has huge array of vegetables. I mean, right now, and every season it changes. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, I mean, there's so much, this capsicum, this gajar, right now, so there's full gobi, there is brinjal, there's pata gobi, there's semfali, that's your papri. I mean, we have so much French beans, muli, turnips, palak, methi, sarso. I mean, I can have vegetables 10 days, 14 days without repeating. But people don't make vegetables. Uh, uh, Nedi, I have one question in mind. There are several vegetables which are you know, combination vegetables. For example, if I have to make a vegetable of papri or same, so like mostly what we do is we mix potato with it. Yeah, but you can mix a small amount, no? Oh, you don't have to mix a large amount, no? Okay. A tiny, please don't fear the potato. Okay. It has serotonin in it. It's a feel good. Oh, yeah, true that. And you know, I'm going to explain you when I come to, as I am in carbohydrates, you also have grains. Please do not cut out your grains. First and foremost, please understand India is not gluten Intolerant. Yeah, it doesn't have gluten intolerance. That's Southeast Asia. And we, first and foremost, most people, you know, when you ask which is the best diet in the world, they say Mediterranean. Mediterranean. They say Japanese. I say, what's wrong with you? I mean, Indian diet has a 5,000 year old science. The kind of studies that we have done, the kind of food combinations that we have, I don't have one grain. I have multiple grains. I mean, we are supposed, we really have over 100 grains in our country and they change according to season. Right now, it would be the Bajri and Makiki season. Of course, rice is round the year. Wheat is also round the year. Our science is so good. So, you know, a proper balanced meal is what we need to do. Fear not the grain. When I finish the whole thing, you know, you will then get a proper picture. I mean, you said, okay, you know, it would be fats very less. I would say, of course not. The next high group is fat. Do not cut out your fats. Fats actually give you vitamin A, you know, help you absorb vitamin A, D, E, and K. Vitamin A is a powerful antioxidant. It's beta carotene, your high health, eye health, your hair health, your skin. So, you know, lots of people tell me, oh, my hair is falling. I need more protein. And I say, no, you don't need protein. You need to increase your fat and you need to increase your beta carotene. <coughs> so, you know, your vegetables is huge in beta carotene. And when you think of beta carotene, you only think of um, carrots. No, it's not. You know, there is a vegetable now which suddenly all of y'all think, oh yeah, it's a superfood because the Western world is saying it's a superfood. I mean, we have absolutely no pride in our own food. And a 5,000 year old science of food, and maybe even more. Well, the new superfood, which we have been using for years, and most of us do not even look at it, my simple little kaddu, my bhopla. My pumpkin, kaddu ki sabji kaun khayega? Pumpkin soup, I will drink it. I mean, pumpkin can be tossed in everything. It's so low in calories. But we wait for the West, no, to tell us that, oh, wow, this is a super food. I mean, if you follow me on Insta, you'll just learn lovely recipes and how great they are for you. So fat is very, very important. Now, vitamin D, okay? Vitamin D in a lot of places is not also considered a vitamin. 
You know, Harvard once uh, published a paper saying it's not even a vitamin. It is a, a very important hormone. It controls your diabetes. It controls your mood. It helps you absorb calcium. It prevents Alzheimer's. And it needs fat to be absorbed. The brain is made of 50% fat. I mean, if you want the brain to think you need vitamin D, but that cannot be absorbed without fat. Your calcium, your bone health. You know, if you think of it, no food without fat. It's so essential. Sabji, you cook it in fat. Dal, you cook it in fat. Even your meats, everything needs fat. Otherwise, they will not get digested. They will not get assimilated. They'll just sit like lard in your body. I mean, bread with butter, you know, roti with ghee, rice with ghee. Think of it. Even idli will have a coconut chutney, which is fat. That's another thing. The world will tell coconut is superb. So then we'll say, oh, coconut is superb. So Did then uh, many the question is that uh, most Indians uh, do include fat uh, in their food. Like uh, the, this ghee will go with roti, and dal, and all the vegetables are cooked in uh, oil. So yet, uh, you know, we, we see that the same things uh, make us put on weight. So No, yes. it's not that. That doesn't make you put on weight. Hmm. It is cutting out of your vegetables that is making you put on weight. I mean, people are not just having vegetables. They are completely pushing them aside. That's what I said. When the whole thing, you will understand. Mm -hmm. I mean, sambar would have vegetables. There is palak dal, even a dhai kadi. You can put in vegetables. Mm -hmm. Predominantly, 50% of your free, uh, food has to be vegetables. Please stop aping the Western world where they have a little boiled cabbage, cauliflower, and a little spinach. You know, mm -hmm. I have so many patients internationally and right now I've been talking to them so much because we are online. Do you know in Canada, nothing is grown. Everything is imported. I was so shocked. I mean, it is crazy. It's illogical. I think they feed all the vegetables to the animals which they uh, butcher later. Not on. really, not really. They don't grow anything. Okay. Nothing. And yeah, I can understand because there's so much snow. Even right now in Kashmir and all, nothing will be growing, really. That kind of snow. But even in general, just cauliflower, spinach. And please understand, the whole thing is, everything is lobbies there. I mean, all of us will eat broccoli. Why? It's one of the most difficult vegetables. Also, broccoli, you know, or cauliflower. You know, people are having these cauliflower rices and all that. Hello? It's going to cause so much gas and it increases thyroid, your hypothyroid. It slows your metabolism. You're not supposed to have it by tons. I mean, that's why we change vegetables every day with every season. I mean, they boast only of spinach and carrot and cauliflower. I mean, I have, I, I, I think over a hundred different vegetables, if you think of all parts of the country, the greens in Northeast, I mean, 50 different types of spinaches. I mean, what the hell are we doing? Why are we eating the way we are eating? Why are we not following, you know, what we know? I mean, the British did an amazing job. They burnt our literature. They called our food terrible. So fat is very, very, very important. E, D, E, vitamin K. Vitamin K is very important for blood clotting. I mean, today I'm sure all of you all know how important it is not to have clots. So uh, I could be that even though we are eating vegetables, we are eating it in smaller portions and there's more the plate, uh, the, the plate. No, no, there's heaps rice, of protein. Rice, rice or roti more than the vegetables. No, no, we are eating, eating heaps of protein also. And unfortunately, we are, of course, a very small percentage who can afford good fats. Do you know? Only 1% of India... And they don't even use it predominantly. Only 1% uses actually cows or buffalo ghee. Only 1%. 1% no, of India, and that too not as a predominant oil, uses cows or buffalo ghee. Most of the country cannot afford it. It's more than 1,000 rupees a kg. <laughs> that is if you're uh, talking of gear cows and that too, it's because right now the West has made it expensive, talking about A2 cow's milk. And let's now come to protein. Smaller amount. High protein will cause damage to the kidneys. High protein will increase the blood pressure. High protein causes uric acid. So you have to have a smaller amount of protein. It was never meant to be the predominant meal. 
So what should an ideal food plate uh, constitute of? An ideal for food place, let's look at breakfast, okay, as a matter of fact. I mean, also we don't need so many meals. And if you're going to do four meals, we have to have tinier meals. The thing of a heavy breakfast was again a Western concept because they have dinner by 6.30. You know, by sunset, they're having dinner. We are not having it. Our dinners have become predominantly heavy. Then how do you have breakfast which is heavy? You know, so breakfast, it, depending on your dinner, it has to be having carbohydrate. Mm. Whether you do fruits or whether you do, say it's down south, it would be idli. But do it with sambar which has lots of vegetables. And the gunpowder, people forget the vegetables. Or do a tomato chutney with it. How you can do it? one paratha with lots of vegetables. You can do an open bread sandwich. Yeah. You can do upma with lots of vegetables. The grain has to be much lesser. In the, in the and I, in this, this thing. Oh, I must have the badam and I must have the walnuts. Hey, quit it. I mean, and a lot, there was a study done, you know, which I was there in uh, times where they say Indian breakfast is anemic. Oh, listen, we, we look at iron content in our vegetables, which comes plenty at lunch and dinner. I mean, breakfast doesn't need to have iron, to be very honest. So, it's then, there, it's balanced throughout the day. We hmm. need the carbohydrate. In the morning, either fruit or either a toast with vegetables. And let me tell you, gram to gram, protein, no vegetarian lacks protein. Unless it comes from the malnutrition part of India. Gram to gram, do you know peanut has more protein than an egg? Have you seen that trending song that is coming nowadays about badam? You must really go on that. And your peanut is really the Indian badam. It has everything in it. More protein, low glycemic index. Right. So a little peanut in our chutney was a very common thing. Yes. Correct. Correct. Or co coconut in the, in the chutney. So it's good quality fat. And it'll keep you full for a longer time. Again, from which region you're coming. Omega-3 is there in flax seeds. Over 5,000 years. Mm -hmm. Have it like a mukwas after your lunch. And lunch has to be the most important meal. But if it can't be, it can be breakfast and then it can be dinner. But roti, sabji, dal, rice, sambar, healthy? sabji. Is it healthy to eat paratha sabji in breakfast because paratha has earned a lot of bad rap with the years that, oh my God, it's laid in the Depends on, again, I say your dinner. Okay. Again, it depends on dinner. And let there be paratha stuffed with vegetables like gobika paratha, mudika paratha. You could probably do it in this, this season. And it also depends on the size of the paratha. It depends on the activity. And also people not comparatively are much taller than the rest of the part of India. So metabolism changes, everything changes. But again, I say more vegetables. Accompanied with a gajar ka achar, hari chutney. And if, the, of course, the paratha will have little ghee, then you don't need the coconut and the nuts. I mean, just because it's good, you don't keep popping it into your mouth. You know, Japanese, even India really didn't have a thing called snacking. A lot of people used to have a breakfast, go for work, and then there was no lunch. Maybe a cup of tea in between, and it was dinner. Again, this tea time, biscuit in the tea, all this came with the British. We didn't have it. Many times breakfast could be just a glass of milk and a fruit. A lot of people did that even for dinner. Dinner, I mean, so many people feel bloat. But look at the combination, Rajma, Ratko, Chana, Ratko, Kya Kar rahe ho? Those are not foods for the night. Food for the night is very, very simple and easy to digest. Why would I fear the rice? The first food after mother's milk and fruit, a child is fed since centuries is rice. Our every puja has rice in it, but smaller quantities. I mean, we need to learn how to add vegetables. I mean, this myth, which people tell me, you know, oh, a bacha should have anything. What are you talking? I mean, I'm making a building and let me put bad cement in it. The foundation of a child's food is so very important. I remember Dr. Shetty of Apollo Hospitals and we were sharing a podium once in Delhi only. And I was waiting for his lecture, which was first. And he said, smoke and bad nutrition affects three generations. So the mother is smoking or the mother has bad nutrition, the child has bad nutrition. And so 
her foundation is not good, so her child doesn't have. And also, please understand, it's not only the mother's nutrition, it's also the father's nutrition. Are you shocked? Why? Don't you say he has got diabetic as a gene because his father and grandfather had it. So the father has to improve the nutrition too. His brain has gone so much on his father. Don't we say all this? So your genetic code comes from both the parents. So it is both food that is important. And unless you eat more, you are not going to turn on your skinny genes. But you have to eat the right food and in the right balance. Tell me when you have to eat ghar ka khana, which is a normal sabji, roti or dal, or rice, dal, you know, sabji, how come you don't overeat? Have you ever thought of that? Because the body gives the signal, I am full. The body says, yay, I've got my iron, I've got my calcium, I've got my nutrients. And why outside when you do, you overeat? Because the body is like, where is it? Hey, I'm not getting it. How can I get full? You know, it's like a bank balance. You put in food every day. You take out food for your day-to-day -day activities, for your iron, for your calcium, for your minerals. Then it's safe for emergencies. When you're sick, you go into your resources. Centuries ago, what centuries ago? There were famine done by the British way in 30s. Right. And the, those body stores worked for them. Do you understand? But now if I eat a junk food today, which has absolutely no mineral and nutrient, where is it going to go from the store? So your bad food causes you obesity, causes you nutrition deficiency because you are not full. You will keep overeating. Mm -hmm. And sugar, sugar wasn't even there in India. It was only for the affluent. Again, white sugar came more with the British. And maybe they've had the gulab jamuns and the shira. You go back how, how occasionally. Okay. Tilka laddu came only on Sankranti for two, three days. Not like for five months, your gajak. Like your gajak didn't mm -hmm. remain with you for three months. It was normally given on that pongal or sankranti. It was not everyday sweet. And do you know the sizes, how big they become? They used to be small little gulab jamuns before. Never those big, I mean, I don't know what they're the sizes of the early of laddus and laddus, so I don't know what has happened only. People do have sweet cravings after they've had their lunch. I'll tell you why. What is the first food that you eat is mother's milk. It's naturally sweet. And then it's fruit. But because mother's milk is sweet, you crave for sweet. But you do not need, need to eat bad sweets, no. And when you eat a balanced meal, where there's enough carbohydrate, all foods are converted to glucose. Do not mistake glucose as sugar. So when, again, some nutrient is deficient, you will reach out for the sugar. You just eat for two months properly and you will see that you will crave sugar less. And also sugar activates the same cells in the body and gives you pleasure, which cocaine gives you. So do you understand how addictive it is? Sugar is the next tobacco. What next tobacco? It is like tobacco. It is like drugs. It causes that much harm. Instant energy, hyperness. I mean, when children don't get sleep at the right time, we tell them to cut down sugar. You know, mothers tend to give biscuits, milk with sugar. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, we use food as a reward. You should be using like, oh, wow, you know, this beautiful meal. Today, the world is talking about fresh food, organic food, freshly cooked food. That's what India does every day. You know, the poorest families cook fresh food every day. Why are we eating stale food? Why are we eating fresh food? Why are we feeling the junk? Why are we not having pride in our own food? I don't need to look anywhere else. I don't need to look into a Mediterranean diet where they say, you know, I had this argument with a reporter. Mediterranean diet is very healthy. I said, why? Oh, because it talks of love, vegetables. I said, they basically talk about tomato. They don't have the array of vegetables we have. They talk about whole grains. I said, they have two grains. They talk about olive oil. I said, my mustard oil has as much property. And I have been to Italy. I've been to schools studying, uh, you know, olive oil. I've been to the farms. I've been to universities. That's not the predominant oil in Mediterranean, by the way. It's too expensive even for them. Oh, they have omega-3 fish. They barely have fish. That's not the diet. Most of their food is processed. Oh, they have garlic. How many herbs I have? 
हाउ मेनी स्पाइसिस है भाई लाइफ में थोड़ा तड़का तो चाहिए तड़का के बिना क्या मजा सो so, खाना तड़के के बिना क्या हल्दी मिर्ची आप तड़का बोलो आप बघार बोलो आप टेम्परिंग बोलो वॉट एवर यू कॉल इट Why did the East India Company come here for the spices? Imagine, like the Western world, you have to have only boiled spinach and boiled carrots and a few pieces of cauliflower. Will you eat it? I won't eat the vegetables. Those vegetable juices, people glug. Why? Because they don't know how to cook vegetables. I mean, lightly spice and how many spices? Today, though, they're talking about the medical value of spices. GST is a must. I say GGT. Ginger, garlic, turmeric, and that's not all I have. Every spice has a need, but not this nonsense where people, you know, take a big spoon of turmeric or a big spoon of uh, uh, cinnamon. Hello, these are called garam masalas. They burn your lining. You know, when cinnamon is taken, it's taken a pinch, just a pinch, and never on its own. We know that it needs fat. We don't cook. A food without fat, and that's where the spices are added. So they started bulletproof coffee internationally, coconut milk, turmeric, because they realize that you cannot have it without fat. Please don't forget our common sense. And dal, sabji, roti, to is pasta. Today, a parent takes pride when their child eats, you know, Brazilian some salmon and quinoa from Amazon. Why? You know, I know the head of ja- Yakult. He's lived here now fourteen years. In India, his child is born here from Japan. He's a Japanese. He has Indian food, and his child only eats Japanese food. You see, when you get Westerners as guests, do they eat more than one day in Indian food? And that too, they'll choose a kebab, maybe a dosa. They won't even go down that road. They have pride in their food. We have no pride in our food. We have no pride in our nation till they say from there. Curry leaves. We'll actually chuck it out. Neem, what's wrong with us? All these things help in burning fat. They increase your metabolic rate, your spices, your vegetables. One kilo of vegetables is three hundred calories. Take pride. Your genes know this food. They don't know that crap. Imagine how many hours a quinoa has taken to travel. They ask for probiotic. That probiotic is part of Indian food. Your pickles, your idli, your dosas. They all fermented. Your curd. Can I have that probiotic drink? Have you seen how much sugar is in it? Yakult. Are you referring to that? Many others. Many others. Okay. I mean, I also know why Yakult came there. There was no milk or dairy or fermented foods in Japan. Doctor Shiroda saw in 1800 so many people were dying of gastro, and then he realized that you needed gut-friendly bacteria. And he did years of research, and that's when he got, you know, the uh, you know the live bacteria artificially, and then he made a drink, which had to be mixed in, you know, a dairy product, but it was so so sour that it had to have sugar. But we have it in our food, and probiotic, yes, is normally best had in the morning part. That's why dahi so often is not had in the night. Achars are not had in the night. It's light of food. I mean, wake up, man. Wake up. Eat good food. That's good for you. I mean, dum hai to tayari karo yar kamyabi ki. Mere saath chalu karo. Eat plenty. Eat seasonal. Why would I eat? You know, you've heard of the term sattvic, rajasic, tamasic. What is it in connection with us today? So, which kind of your mostly eating looks like tamasic food? Because it's all frozen. You know what was found common again with criminals? were they from criminal backgrounds were they from mentally disturbed home or poverty it was junk food rajasik person short tempered go getter me my family my company that has to improve i can eat mangoes right now i can get the imported cherries wow i get the brazilian salmon he's only thinking about himself his family his company not about what can i give back to the planet what is sattvic simple food seasonal food freshly cooked food organic food i'm thinking about sustainability i mean that's why we turn vegetarian because we're thinking more for the planet i mean think 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 
I'm not saying Satwik is only a vegetarian. You know, I talk about two politicians. And Satwik means I cannot achieve more. Oh, no. There's no such thing. Abdul Kalam, come on. He was a politician. He was vegetarian, by, this, by the way. Industrialist, J.R.D. Tata. He did eat non-veg. But smaller quantities and lots of vegetables on his plate. I've studied so many people's diets who are fit, slim, and the brain is working so great. They think about much more than themselves. That's what it is to be. That's what Satvik. And what would you want? Don't you want to be healthy? Don't you want your brain to tick a lot? Don't you want to turn off your fat genes? You need to eat well. And people just forget circadian rhythm. Waking up in time, sleeping in time. I mean, this PCOS, which is so common with women, young girls, rather every girl, it's because they don't eat good food. They don't wake up in time. They don't sleep in time. Infertility in men and women, circadian rhythm, bad food, obesity. How much does exercise play a role in keeping you fit? Uh, of course, it plays a very, very fit. important role. But how will you move your body unless your body has the right fuel? Correct. It's not about pumping weights. Yoga, walking, deep breathing, sports, games, cycling. That's what it is all about. Turn off your fat genes by eating plenty, but eating sensibly, eating with season. I mean, I won't get the mango till, you know, what we say, April 15th, Ram Naomi. The best mangoes actually are in May. What is the fruit right now? The grapes have just come. The strawberries are there. Apples are there. No, 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 no. Apple season is over. You're eating only the deep frozen ones. Last apple stops when frost comes. This is pomegranate season. Yes, you do get papayas and bananas around the year. Fresh figs. Yeah, the melons will come in, you know, literally during the time of roughly after Shivratri. So right now I would say after first, you know, of March when the winds stop and then comes the mangoes and then comes the other fruit slowly and steadily. With its now, season. Uh, correct. Now most of the vegetables and fruits are available around the year. The yeah, but you have to remember, no? That's what you have to make the people recollect. Let I me, have let to write me. an article on that, you know, because lots of people ask me, what is the seasonal fruit? Okay, let, let me just finish my, uh, complete my question. My uh, question was pertaining to something, uh, another, another thing called was, uh, this tomato. Now, tomato is now available all around the year and it is now become a part of every vegetable that we cook. So would you suggest that we use tomato uh, around the year or should we also be eating it only during winter? See, the best season of tomatoes is the winter season all the way till the summer. Right. Okay. When the seeds increase in the tomato, that's when you stop the tomato. Okay. okay? And why, do, does, why has tomatoes creeped into every food? This is a season where you have all the greens. Your French beans doesn't need tomato. Your papri doesn't need tomato. I mean, use greens. And this dhania, people though don't use dhania only. They think it's only for garnishing. It's the most powerful antioxidant. And when all these nutrients come into your body, you get satisfied and you stop eating more and more and more. And how I mean, the last two years has been a challenge for everybody. COVID, a lot of people have got COVID, including me. And it has taken the mickey out of a lot of us. Each body has reacted differently. Some with weight loss, some with weight gain, some with high sugars. So we all have to work. I mean, why are men and women in India gaining a lot of weight? There's a lot of sedentary life combined with wrong food. And too much food. Compared to no activity, this kind of food you don't need. Think of fresh food. Think of organic food. Think of food without chemicals. There are natural sugars if you need it. You could use a little jaggery in the food, but jaggery in your tea and coffee, it has as much sugar as you would get in sugar itself. It's just one process below. You have stevia which is a natural plant, plant sugar. You could try that, but you could have your beverage without it. Just try it. 
and you see it doesn't make a difference if your food is balanced. Okay. And how big should be the portion of salad while having uh, one's lunch? See, right now in the winter, I do more cooked salads. Because carrot, as I tell you, is vitamin A. Vitamin A cannot be absorbed without fat. So I give it a tempering. Okay, the muni also I give it a tempering, but sometimes I cut it very fine and I put lemon and salt and I enjoy it. And I put little jeera so it doesn't get high flat units. And I normally eat it with the food. So there is fat in the food. So, you know, in the body it can, you know, be absorbed properly. So it means all those who are on a fat loss journey, we not actually fear of fat. We can easily uh, say spread a little bit of, uh, say, butter on the... Yeah, you won't get full. You won't get the absorption of vitamins and minerals. Wow, wow. I think this was something which most of us are unaware of because... And high protein diet, like... please forget it. Please, please forget it. Okay. And you know, fasting. A lot of people ask me about fasting. I, I'm, I'm not a great fan of 18 hours and 20 hours because it can lead a very low sugar and it can lead you into very low blood pressure. But you know, eat with the circadian rhythm. Try to eat the meal as early as possible. Try to sleep before 12. Try to keep a gap of two hours minimum between your meal and your sleep time. I mean, 12 hours is a normal thing which was done in our country. I mean, fasting once a week, fair enough if you want to, but your body must have all the nutrients. I think Ramzan is going to come in, say, maybe a couple of months. And I'm, don't, I'm not very clearly aware of the date. But they also, I do, they, they fast for a long period and then they eat, I think, only... Yeah, but do you understand months. where it comes from? What does and, Ramzan and mean? It is, it is, and then kind of it is, it is said that it is very good for the body and people actually uh, feel uh, better health-wise. So whereas for me, that to me, it doesn't make sense because, you know, there's such a huge gap between two meals and there's not even an intake of water. And yet it seems to work for those people who... Okay, now I'll again come back to you. Hmm. I'll again come back to you on this one. Ramzan is also a time of remembering like all fasting comes in terms, in connection with religion. Hmm. Islam basically originated from the Middle East. Now go back even 50 years. The man in the Middle East used to get up early in the morning, really early, you know, before sunrise, have his first meal. And he was basically a wanderer. There was nothing there. This is the Middle East you're seeing wasn't even there before the 70s. He used to go in the tribe. I mean, go out in the desert, try to do his whatever, you know, his work. He may not even come back. So he used to save the water and the food when he reached the camp in the night or an oasis. So Ramzan is a way of reminding them of the life before. And the strife which an Islam, a person from the Middle East and from that part of the world used to follow. He would come back, he would find an oasis, then he would find, normally then nothing grew there other than dates and then he had to kill an animal to eat. And then he again didn't eat till next morning. So people did you know, they treat, like most people here do fasting and feasting. Even in fasting, they feast. Mm -hmm. I mean, this intermittent fasting, I mean, I mean, please have your meal at nine. You're not supposed to have your first meal, you know, at one and two and to do their changes and they eat the dinner at 10 and 11. I mean, what are you doing? It's robbing you of the importance of fasting. You know, in the months of June, July, August, all the way till October, we don't have leafy greens. We don't have cabbage cauliflower. Because it's full of worms. We don't have underground food. There's a logic behind it. So is it safe to have cabbage during winter? Uh, is there a less... Problem? Of course it is. Look at it, how tender it is. Okay. But not during it practically winter. melts in the mouth if it's good quality, even the cauliflower. Mm -hmm. And try to have a car carrot in summer. I want to hit someone on the head with it. I mean, and it's not even juicy. You need water-based foods in the summer, no? Have yeah. I given you food for thoughts? Why don't you open the thing for question yes, answer? Yes, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, how, if, if somebody likes dark chocolate very much, how bad is that or how good is that? How often can one have a dark chocolate? I mean, I won't have it daily, that's for sure. As I say, dark chocolate consists of a lot of milk solids also. Anything which has even part of sugar in it, I won't, won't do it daily. Once in two, three days or once in a week? Why don't you try being without it for some time 
and then see how often the craving comes. The first day will come every hour and then it will lessen. I do cocoa nibs, by the way, which are roasted cocoa nibs unsweetened and it gives me as much pleasure as a dark chocolate. Sometimes I mix it with pomegranate seeds. You really, really should follow my Insta to get all these little, little tricks. Great. Thank you so much. Not at all. My pleasure. How is it good to try Indian sweets than the what processed sweets? See, like sweet the... is a sweet. Whether it's Indian or whether it is Western, I mean, I would go easy on the sugar, come what may. Okay. So I think it's only you... meant for occasions. And a small okay. quantity doesn't harm anybody, but not daily. Thank and you. you know, our Indian food has all the taste. If it's a balanced meal, it'll have everything. So, you know, sweet, astringent, because your certain vegetables are also sweet, no? According to the season, the carrots, the pumpkins, there is a way, you know? What I see our festival, always some sweet is... Puran festival is fine, occasionally is fine, small quantities is fine. The point is you have to get your body to a level of such good health that when you have that occasionally, it shouldn't harm you. But not the quantities which people have today. Uh, my, uh, my my question is, uh, if someone is facing from the acidity problem, so what diet should he or she should uh, take? It has to be a very alkaline diet. So one of the things which is, I mean, you'll be shocked that uh, squeeze lemon on most foods. Lemon is acidic on the tongue, but alkaline in the body. And vegetables are one of your most non-acidic foods, also fruits. So you need to, uh, but lemon is one of the most powerful antiacids. And when I say don't do more protein, that doesn't give you any right to eat more grains. I'm saying balance. More vegetables, good quality protein. Protein has to be part of the diet. I just want to know that, uh, is it cooked vegetables or the raw ones? Which do you suggest or? Uh... It's individualistically, but normally cooked vegetables are easier to digest. Raw is always in a smaller quantity, but again, it's individual. You have to see if your body is acidic, if your body uh, tends to bloat. So it's food combinations. Uh, the best way to be energetic. Energetic. Food energy throughout the Sleep day. Sleep in time, wake up in time, add a bit of exercise, you know, and eat good food. The fuel for your body is food. I mean, it was very interesting when economist uh, Amartya Sen said that the economy of the country cannot improve unless you improve the food. Mm -hmm. How will the brain work if there is no good food? That's why many times we say today's children don't have that energy. Today's workers don't have that energy because we have bad food. That's why healthy food, healthy body, healthy mind, healthy nation, and the future is brighter for all of us. I only want to spread the word of good food that's good for you. Good food will give you good weight, will give you good energy, will give you good mood. And we have an abundance of it. Yeah, sure. One that at the outset, I would like to compliment and thank you for a very beautiful and a very enlightening lecture. Thank My so faith much. in Indian food has been restored because I only eat Indian food and vegetarian food at that. Now, I have a question about uh, festivals in which a lot of fried food, samosas, kachori, jalebis are made. How much of that one should eat? Because notwithstanding a vegetarian food, I keep gaining weight and I keep uh, trying to cut down the intake, but uh, I am not able to lose weight. So this is a question which keeps coming to my mind. Small quantities. And try to see that it is fried in cow's ghee. Cow's ghee, okay. Yeah. In fact. the ghee, ma'am. Okay. But small quantities. But your lecture has been great. And Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you. You Thank are not you. selling McDonald's. You are selling vegetables, which is something very great. Thank I'm you. selling my Indian food. And I don't need yes. to sell it. The world is looking here and we are looking elsewhere. Uh, how early can you have a, a roti, sabji, dal in the morning? Can you have it as early as 9.30, 10 o'clock? Of course you can. Of course you can. What is the ideal time according to you? Roti, sabji, dal can be had in the morning. It gives you the balanced meal. So as early as even 9 o'clock? As early as 9 o'clock. And then what should we have for lunch then if you have this? If you're hungry, it can be fruit. 
If you have a roti sabji dal, it'll sustain you for a very long time. So ideal time would be nine o'clock. Would you say? No, it depends on what your work life is. What your time your dinner was. If your dinner is going to be at ten thirty, and then you're going to have that uh, heavy breakfast, it doesn't work. Also, the di- uh, digestion. You would have to have, you know, digested your food and eliminated it also, no, before going in for such a heavy meal. So one of the things which I work in is making your digestion system work properly. Right. And if I just ask another question, that for example, if you have uh, say uh, A two milk in the morning, and again A two milk in the night, and just one proper meal, a uh, lunch meal of sabji roti dal, at maybe around twelve thirty one, one thirty, whatever. That can also work. Milk is good. That means two times in a day. It can work for plenty of people. Great, great. Thank you so much. Not at all. My pleasure. We anyway need to live in, a, you know, live in abundance. And what I teach is abundance of food that is good for you. Uh, is chola patura a good combination? No. One wants to have for lunch. No. No. Okay. Occasionally. I read somewhere that milk is not good for health. and some people avoid milk and tea and coffee so, so we used to mean? have uh, you know about a century ago we used to have only desi cows in our country which today which gave milk which was called today is called a2 milk but unfortunately with the western world and the british coming in they found our kya cows very weak and the milk not rich enough so they did a cross breeding with the Hoisten cows, and unfortunately, that milk causes a lot of allergies. So we only had buffaloes and cows' milk, and both are A two, by the way. But the point is, we need to go back to our roots. That's what the world is screaming about, and it's time we woke up. We have it here in abundance. Lovely. Thank you very much, and a very, very good night to you. And I hope I've given you food for thought. and remember the word impossible is i am possible